Need more Brad Pitt zombie killing action in your life? Then we regret to inform you that the window for World War Z 2 has seemingly come and gone, even though it would have been directed by one of America's most talented filmmakers, David Fincher. Even if they didn't love World War Z, fans of David Fincher might still be upset to learn that the scrapped sequel would have seen the three-time Oscar nominee in the director's chair. One of the great American filmmaking discoveries of the 1990s, Fincher has been a consistently remarkable director across multiple decades. He may have had a rocky debut with the critically panned Alien 3, but Fincher's Seven and Fight Club rocked the 90s with their graphic violence and unforgettable twist endings. In the new millennium, his titles The Social Network and Zodiac have become modern classics for a reason. They're tightly paced, well-developed, and impeccably directed. At the same time, Fincher isn't afraid to take risks. The bold tonal and visual swings of films like Gone Girl and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo would be admirable, even if the resulting movies weren't fantastic. Even his weaker efforts, like The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Mank, offer plenty of unique imagery and performances. A new Fincher film is always an event and that would have definitely been the case for his first sequel since Alien 3. But much like his planned adaptation of The Girl Who Played With Fire, the project was eventually abandoned. While David Fincher has become an award-seasoned darling with his most recent features, he's also not the kind of guy who makes films that mistake rigidity for thoughtfulness. Some of Fincher's best works are also delightfully ridiculous. Gone Girl certainly has plenty on its mind, but it's also full of blood and salacious twists. His earlier works, like The Game and Panic Room, are the best kind of pure popcorn thrillers. He may have directed a thoughtful biopic about the writer of Citizen Kane, but he's still the guy who made a movie in which Jared Leto gets set on fire. Fincher isn't afraid to deliver fun genre entertainment without skimping on quality filmmaking, and that's a combination that a World War Z follow-up definitely would have needed. Fincher would have given his zombie movie real brains, but he also could have delivered the sort of violent mayhem audiences want when they pay to see zombies on the big screen. After all, juggling detailed camera work and storytelling with over-the-top genre fun has been a staple of Fincher's career since the beginning. The world of cinema is poorer for not getting to see what he could have done with a blockbuster chronicling a global zombie the outbreak. Mother Nature is a serial killer. No one's better, more creative. The first World War Z is far from perfect, but it's also far from terrible. Despite looking impossibly handsome, Brad Pitt does make for an appealing everyman in the middle of a zombie chaos. Meanwhile, the final 30 minutes are the highlight of the movie, as World War Z harkens back to the earliest days of zombie cinema by relying on tension rather than big explosions. These kinds of scenes make World War Z a serviceable blockbuster, even though an unfortunate over-reliance on CGI and forgettable supporting characters keep it from reaching its full potential. David Fincher's proposed idea for a World War Z sequel would not have had to follow in the footsteps of a perfect or even just fine summer blockbuster. Buster. Instead, it would be a successor to a film with its share of standout elements, but also one that shows clear room for improvement. Without having to worry about living up to the expectations of a sacrosanct predecessor, Fincher would have been able to go in any direction for his creative vision. And the origin could have come from anywhere. It's a shame you had to fly all the way out here to figure that out. One of the greatest complaints about the original World War Z is that it left its source material behind. Granted, it would have been difficult to translate the original novel by Max Brooks into a feature film, as it features various anecdotes from around the globe concerning the zombie apocalypse. It notably takes place once the zombie war has already ended, with the stories being reflections on what has transpired during the lengthy fight with the undead. The World War Z movie departed from this by having Brad Pitt experience a zombie outbreak as it unfolds, building a story based on a single protagonist. Given how much money World War Z made, it's doubtful Paramount Pictures was looking to have Fincher abandon all aspects of the original. However, World War Z 2 could have satisfied some of those readers in several ways, possibly by working some of the stories from the novel into the plot of this sequel. With a follow-up, World War Z 2 could alleviate fan concerns about the original film while still providing an enjoyable blockbuster for the general public. Of course, this intriguing opportunity vanished the moment World War Z 2 went under at the start of 2019. Many filmmakers have that one movie star that they click with better than any other. Akira Kurosawa had Toshiro Mifune. John Ford had John Wayne. As for David Fincher, Brad Pitt hasn't just been the centerpiece of some of his most lucrative movies, but he's also been the anchor for some of the most acclaimed titles in the director's filmography. Seven was the breakthrough directorial effort for Fincher, while Fight Club became a cult phenomenon. The duo even yielded The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, the first Fincher movie nominated for Best Picture. Since The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Pitt and Fincher have yet to find another project to work on together. 
Their hiatus appeared to be coming to a close with World War Z 2, which would have seen them reunite for a film much larger in scale. But like countless other Hollywood efforts, it never came to pass. Even with lots of CGI zombies running around, Fincher could have worked wonders with an older but no less charismatic Pitt. We have so many ideas on the table from the time we spent just de developing this thing and figuring out how zombie worlds work. Although the original World War Z was a box office hit with a worldwide gross over $500 million, it wasn't quite as profitable as it could have been. After all, thanks to some lengthy reshoots, it ended up costing $190 million to produce. Even though the film made enough cash to jumpstart a franchise, Paramount Pictures was eager to keep future installments on a tighter leash financially. When news of World War Z 2's demise broke, the playlist reported that Fincher had been planning to make the film with a smaller budget than its predecessor. No exact figure on a proposed budget was disclosed. Working with a smaller pool of cash, Fincher might have been able to push the envelope a little bit more than he would have if he was working with the cost of the initial World War Z. Of course, this doesn't mean the sky was a limit in terms of what Fincher could produce. The film was still supposed to be a PG-13 movie that would appeal to global audiences, so blood and guts would have to be kept to a minimum. But financial restrictions might have opened the door for Fincher to try out some new, exciting concepts as a filmmaker. There were certainly plenty of enticing ideas ingrained into the prospect of a leaner, cheaper World War Z movie. David Fincher has not had the greatest experiences working on big-budget blockbusters. He's been very open about how he had little creative control on his feature-length directorial debut, Alien 3, but at least that movie got made. Fincher got thrown off Mission Impossible 3 early on in its pre-production and was replaced by J.J. Abrams. Years later, he would attempt once again to deliver a blockbuster by signing on to helm a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea remake for Walt Disney Pictures. The bizarre partnership of Fincher and the House of Mouse would not last, as the director would eventually walk away from the project after casting disputes with the studio. After all these problems, it seems like Fincher would never want to touch a big-budget blockbuster again. But on paper, World War Z 2 did have some appealing qualities to it. In an ideal world, Fincher would have finally delivered a blockbuster sequel that was truly his vision. Alas, the project would eventually get dropped, continuing Fincher's relentless troubles in the world of blockbuster filmmaking. Brad Pitt was the leading man of the original World War Z, but you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone in the general populace that could name other pivotal actors in the film. That's less of a comment on the quality of the performances given by the supporting cast, and more of a byproduct of World War Z's narrative structure. Pitt's protagonist, Jerry Lane, goes on a globe-trotting adventure to figure out a potential solution to the zombie epidemic. Our hero doesn't have a steady supporting cast to play off of. Instead, he's always just moving from one group of potentially helpful souls to the next. With the exception of Jerry's wife and daughters, supporting players in World War Z rarely lasts long in their screen time. This incidental detail could have been helpful for whatever Fincher had planned in World War Z 2. Without having to carry over a handful of beloved supporting characters from the original film, Fincher had the freedom to establish his own supporting cast for Pitt to interact with. Even better, the exemplary casting of Fincher's films means these new figures in the World War Z universe could have been played by some phenomenal performers. From Tilda Swinton to Charles Dance, there are plenty of actors who probably would have been eager to team up with Fincher once again. You sure you want to do this? Of course I'm not. Let's go. Filmmaking is a collaborative art form and the works of David Fincher are no exception. Throughout his career, he has been supported by recurring crew members that have proven integral to his productions. They might not be household names, but Darius Kanji and Jeff Cronenweth have been the go-to cinematographers for Fincher's films. Starting with The Social Network, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross of Nine Inch Nails have served as the default composers for Fincher's films. The presence of familiar artists even extends to the editing bay, where Kirk Baxter and Angus Wall have often worked on the director's projects. World War Z 2 never got far enough along in production to secure major crew members like cinematographers and editors, let alone announce the presence of folks like Kanji or Reznor and Ross. However, it's doubtful Fincher would have abandoned the people who've become such key players in his creative process. The precise editing of Baxter or the evocative imagery of Cronin West cinematography would have been a welcome presence in any movie but they would have been especially embraced in a blockbuster sequel to World War Z. The cancellation of World War Z 2 didn't just mean the loss of a new Fincher movie. It also meant moviegoers were deprived of witnessing new contributions from essential behind-the-scenes artists. A sequel to World War Z isn't the kind of movie one associates with being a passion project. That's not exactly what World War Z 2 was to David Fincher, but it's also clear that he was extremely committed to the potential blockbuster. In 2017, the filmmaker noted that he was working on the sequel. 
but he wasn't ready to roll the cameras on it until the script was as good as it could possibly be. Just slapping up a poster for another World War Z film starring Brad Pitt would probably have been enough to get some moviegoers into theaters, but Fincher isn't one to take the easy route. He kept toiling away on the film, even while simultaneously reporting for duty as one of the key creative voices on the Netflix show Mindhunter. By the time World War Z 2 was canned in February 2019, Fincher had been attached to the production for nearly three years. Filmmakers of Fincher's caliber don't just stick around for that long unless something's really gripped them about a project. It's a shame the world will never know what it was about World War Z 2 that inspired such passion.